Okay, Gary's just letting down the, uh, the restrainers of the top plate at the moment. Um, and the press underneath pushes up on this top plate. In a moment you'll see Gary open it up. Open it up and you'll see the counterweight on the back here full of concrete on it. What are they, Gary? 10 mil or no? 12. 12 mil. Yeah, top and bottom. By the way, Gary, where's the heat uh, injected? Uh, is it electric heated? Yeah, there's some electric. Um, putting this down again. There's going to be electric elements inside here. Okay. So each of these troughs will have an element to in the plane. What sort of wattage may be available? Um, ours will be just in the base before you want to But, um, quite sure. Very high wattage. That is a problem in our village. Yeah. yeah. We still get away with just a 10 amp. Okay, 10 amp time, yeah. Excellent. So Gary's just placing in the restraining bar here again now. Putting through the pipe through. Then you come round here. So you can see that Gary's going underneath at the moment. This hydraulic pump is situated underneath, and that is raising the two, the bottom plate against the top plate, as you can see here. And Gary was pointing out that, first of all, the way this hydraulic is working, it's a bit hard to see. There's two, these two uh, pivoted. Um, what do you call that system? Like a butterfly system, or <laughs> what would you call that system? Um, no, it's just basically a three-to-one arrangement with yes. the, the the jack to give you a twenty-ton of jack to sixty-ton of force. Okay. moving around, taking the bottom plate out of the way. You now see much better the, uh, the structure of the compressing system underneath here. Um, and in particular note of the, the, the size of those restraining bars and the pivot, and also these two arms here, Gary was uh, explaining inside, he's pushed that up again with some round bar being um, rolled in inside that end plate. So these are instead of the I-beams? Yes. Right. And what are they called? I forget what you said. These are a square tube. S square tube? Square, square tube, but it's generally known as the RHS, rectangular section. RHS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I put an extra one in. They only had two I-beams down across here, and they were eight inches, and I thought, well, I'll do it. I'll put three in. To make sure. I, yeah. I don't know, yeah, we don't know the outcome. I'd rather be overkill than. So let me let me ask you something. If you were to design re, if we said, look, do this all again. Yeah. What would you? Uh, what would be the changes you would make? Okay. How would you design it from the beginning I, again? I would, I would have a go at having levers so people can actually lever the bottom plate up against the top plate. Okay. And do away with the jack, so it's a quick operation of lifting the plate up in place. And it would require two people just using leverage to create the pressure? Well, we know, well I know, that the lever mechanism would lift the plate up. Now, how much force it would create, I don't know. Right. That's something you'd have to sort of right. develop. Right. But if you had two either side and you've got four people, you have a leverage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I always think um, you're probably familiar with wool bale presses in shearing caps. I have seen them. Yeah, and as a kid, you know, we were on farms with wool and whatever, and they, 
they actually have a big steel cage and a big hessian bay that goes in the middle and all the fleeces go in. And then when they get pulled up and they tramp them down a bit, you have a big um, separate cage yeah. that goes on top. And then they use manual levers with um, ratcheted wire rope. Yeah. And there's, you know, you get each side and you just ratchet it down and down and down. Those things get incredible the amount of wool tight goes in there. And I'm thinking, you know, there's a fair bit of pressure in there, yeah. you know, by the time they get there. And that's the sort of picture I would come to mind when I'm seeing the same process when it's coming from the top, bottom up, and I'm referring to how they used to do that, the top down, and get huge pressure and never what pressure I would have so, and what about the machining, just the materials and what other, what other operations would you change in this, do you think? Um, well, if you went to that sort of lever net, the arrangement, you know, if they have a, a reasonably uh, good frame, stiff frame, and um, you then wouldn't have to have this moving on the top, you know, you wouldn't have to have this sort of you see, someone's like, you're seeing uh, in my mind's eye a, a shed with a concrete floor with this sort of bolted down into it mm. you know, so it's not moving anywhere. Right. Right. So you wouldn't need any of that system. This system then? This leverage system would you could do without then if you just had those hand levers or no? Or would they be attached to that? This system that's working with the pump now. Yeah, I, I think myself, I've, um, you've put me on the spot here now with design. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I think possibly you'd you'd fix this in place and maybe have some angle guides up here, and then you have some sort of leverage mechanism on on the either side. So when it goes in and goes up, it goes up in the guides and they just can't, can't, can't escape. No. Yeah. Right, because it's in and guides. It comes down, it goes out the guides, you whip it out here, you reload it, next one comes in that side. Right. This is and you have the sliding mechanism fixed, set, so that you can slide the plates. Yeah. Out. Mm -hmm.